So hello everyone, Father John Camus here from St. John Baptiste and joining you today for the 32nd Sunday at Ordinary Time. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today we hear Jesus affirm the resurrection of the dead when faced with a group of religious authorities who refuse to accept it. May our faith in Jesus, who is the resurrection and our life, give us hope. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our hope. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to salvation. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, protect us from all harm. Give us freedom of spirit and health in mind and body, that we may continue your work on earth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So today we'll be reading the Gospel passage, and again, it's taken from the Gospel of Luke. Now some Pharise uh, Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman, but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now, at the resurrection, Whose wife will this woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry. But those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. This Gospel reading today, I think, is certainly uh, one that uh, doesn't excite us just by listening to it uh, immediately. And uh, uh, it's, it's part of a, a long, a long scope that's going on in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to die. So the idea of the resurrection and resurrection of the dead uh, begins to take uh, some root in those final chapters of the Gospel. So here it, it comes out. But I think at the same time, uh, when we just pull out one section of, the, of that narrative, it can be kind of dry and uh, kind of a big yawn, if you want to put it that way. So I thought maybe today what I'd do is uh, look at these, these factions that Jesus is constantly dealing with, uh, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the scribes. I'd like to just look at that, uh, really just to uh, open it up a little bit, who are these people? Just maybe have a little better chance next time you read the scripture or hear the scripture, uh, it'll make more sense what's going on there. Uh, then I'll look a little bit at what Jesus' message is all about to them, uh, what, what he's trying to convey, and what it really needs to mean to us, where, where it can guide us. 
But let's look at the, these political figures, these political groups. Uh, they're, they're political to some extent, more or less, depending on the group, uh, but uh, they're really religious factions, uh, religious philosophical factions within Judaism at the time. And uh, so they, we have the Pharisees, you hear about them all the time. And we've gotten to the point where we use this thing, if someone's a hypocrite, you call them a Pharisee. Right? Uh, and they've gotten notorious for that from the Gospels, especially the Gospel of Matthew. He's very hard on the Pharisees. But they weren't a, pol a particularly political group. Um, they uh, really didn't care who was in charge as long as they could do what they were all about, which was living the letter of the law. Right? Uh, so that, that was really uh, what, what they were looking at. And they accepted all the scriptures, the whole what we call um, the, the uh, books of Moses, the first five books of the, of the Old Testament, plus all the prophets and uh, also the oral tradition all the rules and regulations that were passed down for ceremonial washings, for uh, all kinds of religious ceremonies, that type of thing. All that came uh, through the, the Pharisees. They held all that together. Uh, they believed in the resurrection of the dead. That was part of their philosophical belief. They also believed in the coming of a Messiah. Uh, there are prophecies talking about the great day when someone will come, liberate Israel, and begin a golden age. And that's what they were looking forward to. Uh, they saw many false messiahs, uh, you know, in Jesus' lifetime even. Uh, so when he comes up, uh, they're against him just almost on principle. Uh, it, it, uh, they're, they're trying to stay away from uh, that, a shallow messiah. They want a political leader. They, want, they don't want a religious leader particularly. Uh, but they want someone who can pull it all together. The Sadducees uh, were a very different group. They were the aristocrats in Israel at the time. Many of them also functioned as priests. They were very wealthy and they supported Rome, uh, which was not nearly popular. But they were the wealthy, they were the aristocratic. They wanted to be on the side of the government. They wanted th their money uh, to last them. Uh, they wanted it to be secure. They wanted the support, the support of the government. Philosophically, as they looked into the scriptures, they only held on as scripture the first five books of the Old Testament. Everything else was not so important to them. They believed, uh, did not believe in the resurrection or in spirits or in afterlife. The Pharisees believed in resurrection. What it meant was kind of a question, but the resurrection of the dead, you know, it's, it's because it's alluded to in the book of Maccabees, uh, so that's part of their scripture. The, the Sadducees don't look at that part of the scripture as anything to hold on to, so they're not paying attention to that. Uh, so they have no sense of afterlife. Be wealthy, have a wonderful, happy life. Uh, that's what it's all about. The scribes, were uh, very ancient, were, uh, were uh, really the professional lawyers. Uh, they did divorces and loans and mortgages, inheritances, all those things that you had to go to the scribe. Uh, but they were also experts in the law, uh, as lawyers would be. Uh, and they knew everything. They knew the oral tradition, the stuff that's not in the scripture, but the interpretations of it. Um, uh, you know, the way we do ourselves, we, you know, we have uh, we have, uh, say, a, a gospel, 20 pages long. It's a very short document. But then the, when you start looking at all the commentaries, you have hundreds and hundreds of commentaries on it. Uh, they, were, they were the people who held all that in their heads. Uh, so they were the experts. If you wanted to know anything, you went to a scribe. So in today's gospel, <clears throat> Jesus is being confronted by the Sadducees. And they're after him because everybody's saying he's the Messiah and they don't believe in the Messiah uh, so that's one of the issues with him uh, but also uh, he speaks of resurrection and uh, they they just you know they want to attack him on it so they contrive this uh, this situation they're going back to something 
that's in the book of Deuteronomy. I'm going to read it for you right from the book of Deuteronomy. So there's a law there. When brothers live together and one of them dies without a son, the widow of the deceased shall not marry anyone outside the family, but her husband's brothers shall go to her and perform the duty of her brother-in-law by marrying her. The firstborn son she bears will continue the line of the deceased brother, that his name not be blotted out from Israel. So again, that's a very kind of a practical uh, practical law that, that, that crept in. Uh, when you're dealing with people who are dying when they're 40 and all that, uh, you know, you, you, you want to you have longevity in the family. So this was something that uh, during the time of, of the Exodus or when the books were put together uh, made sense. In Jesus' day, none of that was followed. Uh, that, had, that had really passed by. But they go back to that, and that's what they're fooling with, with him. Their whole idea about who's going to be the husband, they're making a mockery uh, of that idea of afterlife and resurrection. You know, they're, they're pushing it to the point of absurdity. And uh, they, they want to see what he's going to say. He goes and he touches all their buttons. If you, if you listen to what he says, everyone, he talks about resurrection, he talks about spirits. He, you know, so he's hitting them in a very, very, very important places in, the, in, their, in their thinking. He's touching on everyone and refuting them in some way. So he's, what he tells them, the children of this age marry and remarry, right? but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age after life and to the resurrection of the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, which the Sadducees don't believe in, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. He backed up what he's just said there by going to the scripture that they accept right, from the book of Exodus, yeah, where uh, God identifies himself to Moses as the God of, of uh, Jacob, right, Abraham, Isaac, uh, the God of the living. Right? If, he's, if, 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 if he's the God of those people, then they're living, because God is not the God of the dead, he's the God of the living. So Jesus throws that at them. Just in my own thinking, uh, when I was really putting some of my thoughts together, I didn't want to dwell on it too long, but it, it always does concern me. I know a lot of Christians, Catholics specifically, uh, who don't believe in afterlife. Uh, in the Jewish community, it's very much the same thing. It's a very vague idea of afterlife, if any. So the idea is always make your life wonderful, as good as it can be, uh, this is it. Yeah. Uh, but for the Christian, I'm, I'm always concerned with that. We believe in Jesus' resurrection, that's central to us. Uh, you ask a Catholic, uh, what's, what's the importance of the resurrection? Well, it proves Jesus is God. Well, more than that, it proves that there's life after death. You know, that, that if we hold on to that as a belief, it proves to us that there's life after death and that there's a potential to rise again as, as, a, uh, as renewed, uh, you know, to, to look at ourselves as uh, people who are evolving and death is part of that evolution where we move into a, another life, a deeper type of life. Uh, but it, it's concerning to me that so many don't believe. Uh, and I also look at some of our cultural uh, traditions throughout the world, uh, countries, uh, especially in the Mediterranean basin, basin you know, that whole area where uh, if a husband dies, uh, the wife wears black until the day she dies. That continual mourning, somehow that's not compatible in my head uh, with uh, the idea of resurrection, of uh, eternal life, of life after death. It seems just to go against that. Why would you mourn the eternal loss of a person if, if you believed in afterlife? It just doesn't make sense to me. So that you, we do see it in the Christian community. So it's a good thing for us to just lift up and think about. And I really ask you today uh, to do that. Really uh, think, what is, does resurrection mean to me? Not Jesus' body rising from the tomb. Let's put that aside. 
but just your own personal resurrection. Uh, what's going to happen to you when you die? How do you see it? How do you, what are you telling your kids or your grandchildren when they ask you, what happens when, when I die, mommy, daddy? Or what happens, you know, what are you gonna tell them? What are you gonna share with them? Uh, my parents were very, uh, they were believers, uh, and they, I sure, believed in the afterlife, but they didn't know how to talk about it at all. My mother said, I remember very clearly, I asked her, what happens to you when you die? And she said, well, it's like going asleep, but you never wake up. You know, so she, she didn't have anything together, what she could say about afterlife. So I think it's important, really, for us to think about that. Uh, so many people, uh, afterlife is just a matter of heaven and hell. Uh, and it's so much more than that. It has to do, really, with the evolution of life, right? This is, this is one aspect of my life. It's going to change. It's going to have a different quality to it. A different level of life uh, it's going to I believe expand it's going to open up it's going to be freer uh, but that's my way of thinking about it I, I really ask you think about it yourself today uh, what is death all about uh, what is life all about after death uh, think about it uh, if you need to go to that gospel that Jesus uh, gave us today that teaching he gave us in the gospel go back to it it's uh, chapter 20 of Luke's gospel. Uh, but don't don't be afraid to think about that. Don't be afraid to think, what would my answer be to my child or my grandchildren if they ask me, what happens when you die? So let's gather our petitions now. So let us call to mind our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers knowing that our Lord is God of the living. So we pray for the church, that our faith in the resurrection may console and give strength and hope to those approaching death. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have been elected and re-elected this week. May they be helpful in uh, healing the frightening divisions in our country. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for civic and business leaders. May they perform their duties and, and conduct their businesses with honesty and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for those who are unemployed or underemployed or those working in oppressive work environments. To them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those injured or killed in the panic in Seoul, Korea, and for their families and their friends who are mourning. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for the people of Ukraine. We continue to lift them up. Uh, it's getting more and more complicated there with Iran. Uh, so let's really, really hold them in our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Ever loving Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers today. And we ask that you answer them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we've been having our, our altar since November 2nd, Feast of All Souls. We have a number, many, many little uh, names of, of people who have died, people who have given them to us. So we're keeping them on the altar as a remembrance for nine days. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. So we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the church. 
church. Lord, in this Eucharist, we proclaim the death of the Lord. Accept the gifts we present and help us follow him with love, for he is Lord forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. In you, we live and move and have our being. Each day, you show us a Father's love. Your Holy Spirit dwelling within us gives us on earth the hope of unending joy. Your gift of the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is the foretaste and promise of the Paschal Feast of Heaven. So with thankful praise, in company with the angels, we glorify the wonders of your power. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up. supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, <coughs> this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. And may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, may we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the nourishment you give us through your holy gift. Pour out your spirit upon us, and in the strength of this food from heaven, keep us single-minded in your service. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended and we go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Just uh, once again, an invitation to come back to the community. It'd be wonderful to see you here uh, in uh, full form. And also uh, just another announcement about our religious education program. We're still uh, uh, opening it up for children to join. It's not too late to join. So if you have grandchildren or children who do need uh, some religious ed, we offer from second grade all the way up to eighth grade. Just give a call to the rectory. Have a great week.